everyone wants to be a trader, but when the time comes, when the market's slow, and you know it's a it's a, a bit choppy, um, it's very easy to to start thinking, dang, you know, trading might not be for me. But this is more normal. You know, what we experienced in 2020, uh, especially the later part of 2020, the very early part of this year, not normal, guys, not normal. And, you know, I've done everything in my power to, to, to express my... I don't know if concern is the right word, but I, I guess express my thoughts, express my feelings toward all of the all of the new retail money that's been involved, all of the um, the bubble sectors and small cap, mid cap, and even large cap too. And geez, that guy's driving fast. I'm in my gym parking lot. Um, and. You know, having traded for eight years now and seeing what, you know, a normal market is like and to go from that normal market to what we saw last year. And again, you know, during the course of my trading career, while I consider my trading career relatively short in the grand scheme of things, you know, eight years, you know, there's guys that have been doing it. I'm friends with guys that have been doing it 20, 25 years. And I know there's plenty of traders and, and long-term investor type guys who have been doing it 30, 40, 50 years. So eight years really isn't that long. You know, it's enough time to really experience one, maybe two solid cycles of, of um, market correction, market choppiness and bull run. Um, but really, you know, for the most part of my trading career, it's been a bull run um, in the broad market anyway. Small caps, mid caps, they've always been relatively lucrative. Micro caps, you know, they've had their they've had their moments, but you know, um, all of that though, compared, you know, the first seven years of my career compared to last year, 2020 it's like not even remotely comparable. And I think what is happening and what, you know, I've been trying to talk about, like I said, what I've been concerned with, what I've been trying to express my, I guess, concern or thought or whatever, you know, I've been expressing that. And I've been trying to emphasize the fact that what we have seen recently is not how the market is always going to be. And if that means that trading is a turnoff for you because this is kind of more normal, um, then, you know, I guess that means that trading's not for you. For me, what, what this type of period allows is it allows patience as the market kind of chops up and digests all of the, I mean, I guess we could just call it like the, um, I don't know what the right, I mean, the fake money, the, the, um, the new money, whatever, whatever terminology you want to use, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of new money that's involved and what's happening and what I've, you know, I've said this for months and I'm going to continue saying it because it's really just starting. We're really kind of in the first inning here. But we're seeing the, the the choppiness of that. And, you know, it's going to take months and, you know, possibly years to digest all of that new money that came in last year. It's going to take a bit to chop them all up. And, you know, if there's one thing that you can guarantee is going to happen in the stock market, it's that the stock market's always going to kind of find that homeostasis right? The markets, you know, might get volatile, might have some crazy, crazy scenarios, some crazy days, weeks, whatever, you know, but at the end of, at the end of the day, once the dust settles and once the market kind of gets back toward homeostasis, that's when a lot of that new money that I've been talking about 
is just kind of taken out of the equation. Um, and when there's as much new money that's been involved as there has been over the last year, that process is gonna take a little bit longer than what we've seen previous. So like back in the dot-com bubble, you know, 98, 99, 2000, just unbelievable euphoria. You know, that took the better part of 10 years to digest a lot of that money, which think about it, that's crazy. You know, two, three years of a bull market, an, an insane bull market, albeit, but to take a decade to kind of digest that move is mind boggling. So last year, you know, let's say a year of euphoria, of euphoria, you know, if you're keeping the math all relative, you know, it's probably gonna take two, three years to, to kind of digest what we just saw. And that's perfectly normal to, to see. Um, so yeah, it's, it's much of the same for me. I'm patient. Um, you know, I, I take trades here and there, but they're very small. Um, this isn't the market where I feel like I'm going to be taking a trade and, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to be able to like wake up in the morning and, um, you know, <laughs> retire from that trade. Like that's not, that's not the type of market we're in right now. The trades I'm taking are still very much small scalp type trades where I'm in and I'm out and I'm, you know, I'm moving very quick. Um, and again, it's like, that's okay to, to be in that type of market because I know what I'm good at. I know what I'm not good at. What I'm not good at is in markets like this, when it's super choppy, I'm not good at sitting at my screen all day and just putting in, you know, six to eight hours of screen time and burning myself out. I, I, I don't want to do that. Um, I guess, you know, I, 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 I said I'm, I'm not good at that, but really I am good at that. I just don't want to do that. I have no interest in sitting there for six, seven, eight hours a day on my computer, not moving and, and scalping the market. That's not the, the type of trades that I'm looking for at, at this point in my career. I'm very much patient for the, the high conviction swing type of trades to develop. And right now there are zero. Um, so I'm patient to let the market digest, micro caps, small caps, mid caps, and now you're seeing some, some breath coming into the large caps. And um, it takes some time. It's gonna take some time. And in the meantime, it's gonna be much of the same for me. Small size, quick in and out type of trades. Um, but yeah, you just, you gotta keep in mind that, you know, a stock like Tesla, which went up a thousand percent over the course of one year. I'm trying to think what their market cap got up to. I wanna say their market cap got up to like 300 or 400 billion. I'll double check that after the video. It was up there. They had a crazy valuation at one point. <clears throat> that needs to digest itself, right? That's going to come back down to earth a little bit. So what does that do? That brings kind of all, all the, the majority of the mid cap and small caps. You know, if Tesla pulls back 50, 60%, you could bet your bottom dollar that a lot of the electric vehicle and green energy stocks within, you know, that sector, the, the mid caps and small caps are probably going to pull back, you know, 90 to 95%. Seriously, seriously, like something like PLUG, which maxed out near $80. If that pulled back to, you know, nine, eight, seven dollars fuel cell hit $30. If fuel cell pulled back to $3 over the next year, wouldn't it shock me? I wouldn't it surprise me at all. Uh, even $2. Um, something like NIO, NEO. I want to say NEO got up to $70, but I, I, don't, I don't remember the exact max price. But again, something like NEO, I could see it pulling back 90 to 95% from its highs. 
That's the kind of market that we're entering. We're entering the phase of digestion and it's not fun. The phase of digestion is not fun. It's a lot of fun when everything's, you know, pandemonium, euphoria and, and blasting off. But when we have a year or two years or possibly longer of this digestion phase, it's boring, it's mundane, it's the same thing day in, day out almost. And there might be a pop here and there, but essentially it's just this slow bleed out. It's boring. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I think that's what's going to take place for a lot of these stocks, a lot of the very popular stocks like GME, GameStop. That's another one that I just don't, I don't see, I don't see how that one does anything besides just slowly bleed out back down toward you know, 40, 30, $20 over the next year. It's like this, this large influx of money came in, moved all of these stocks. And now that the money is trickling out, it's just, it turns into that slow bleed. Um, so yeah, slow bleed. There's so much more to talk about. You know, I just wanted to get my thoughts out there for a quick second, just kind of update you guys. For me, same thing. Scaled back, size small, and trades are in and out quick. Um, I do think, and you know, I said this in a, one or two webinars ago. At some point soon, we're going to have some volatility. We're going to have a, a large pullback, and it's going to present a good opportunity to, for a bounce trade. Um, I still believe that's coming. I don't. I I want to believe that this morning was not that opportunity. I hope not anyway, because I I didn't really do too much. Um, but I feel like at some point soon we're gonna get that volatile washout, and it'll make for a good bounce play. When exactly that comes, I have no idea, obviously. But that's kind of the next trade that I'm looking to make, and I think the market really needs it. I think it's really, I think it's really prudent for the market to to get that kind of wash out and kind of reset things a bit. But yeah, I mean, other than that, I'm patient. There's no, there's no hot sectors right now. There's no, there's no good swing trade setup. So for the most part, it's just patience and um, making sure that I don't burn myself out or, or, or burn through my capital or anything like that. It's just super small, keep it selective. And uh, you know, understand what's taking place. That's so important. Um, uh, I still want to do that video, the ARC, SPY, QQQ, break down the charts. Um, I'll, I'll probably do that tonight, but I just wanted to get these thoughts out there. Um, again, it's all a lot of stuff that I've already said, but it's worth repeating. So yeah, I hope everybody's having a great day. Um, I'll be in touch. Peace and love, y'all.